Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going over the overall anatomy of a long bone and also going down and looking at the microscopic structure of compact bone. So using these two models here, one is just the model of the humerus just to go over the general features of a long bone. Uh, and then this one showing the smaller structures we find within the um, hard part of the compact bone. We're gonna talk about the different collagen fiber directions and so forth, so we have a couple two pretty good models here going over it. So there's the overall structure of if we would take a cross section of the bone. And then here is looking at one structure within that called an osteon. Uh, so two different parts here that we're going to look at. Uh, so one thing I forgot to do, I forgot to open my pen here. Uh, so let's get that open and there we go. So first part here is I wanna label the parts of the long bone. Uh, so if we move ahead through here, find a good spot, Right here, I, I'll be able to label most stuff on this bone now. Um, so the main parts are the ends. So the ends are typically covered in articular cartilage. It's made of hyaline cartilage. Articulate, whatever, when, you, when I say articulate, it means it connects to something. Uh, so usually that's what forms the joints. Uh, so here, has a, each end is pro, has a proximal and a distal end. So this would be the proximal end and this would be the distal end of the humerus in particular. Uh, and then there are a couple names. So the ends of each get a name. And then the middle also gets a name. The middle is called a diaphysis. The end, so it would be proximal or distal epiphysis. So then this would be epiphysis as well. I-S, not E-S. Boom. So proximal and distal, and then the diaphysis is the main part of the long bone. Uh, there's also a layer of connective tissue on the outside. Uh, we'll talk about that on the next model, but it's called the periosteum. And then inside, around the compact bone, is the endosteum. So uh, some other parts on this bone here. So remember, you have the articular cartilage at the ends of where you form the joints. Um, and then on the inside, let's pretend we take a little section out of this. So let me switch uh, colors here to black and pretend we just took a cross section or a longitudinal section right here and we just chopped this part of the bone out. So we just chopped this part of the bone. Actually, let's chop more than that. Uh, erase just a little bit here. Oops, that's highlight. So let's go a little further up and cut the whole top part off here too. Uh, so here, kind of what this looks like. I know it looks bad, but imagine this is now hollow. So in the middle here, so we're talking about the marrow now. Uh, so in the middle here is the, uh, so the medullary cavity. Uh, I can label that right now. We can go back uh, to our green. So the middle part here is called the medullary cavity. Now just imagine this bone is sectioned, cut right down the middle here. So we have the compact bone out here, and then the medullary cavity is in the middle. Now at the tops, now we start getting spongy bone. So at the ends of long bones is where you have spongy bone, and that forms these little trabeculae. There's a little line right here we'll talk about, and then there's more spongy bone up here in the head of the long bone. Now this is a bad representation of spongy bone, but just imagine that it's spongy bone. So spongy bone has a little trabeculae and those little ridges or channels and stuff in it. Uh, so here, that's the spongy bone. So we'll label the spongy bone. I'll write that over here, uh, spongy bone, whereas on the outsides that we're gonna label next, this is the compact bone. And then in the spongy bone is where you'd find red bone marrow. And then down here, I'm not gonna label red bone marrow. Um, tip, because sometimes it can change, but most of the time that's where it's found. And then the yellow part here is the yellow marrow, which is important for lipid and fat storage for energy. So this is yellow 
marrow. But red bone marrows would only be found in the ends of the long bones in regions of spongy bone. Now, the last thing I didn't label was this line right here. This line is an important name. These are kind of these are your growth plates in a way. Uh, these is called your epiphyseal line. So, epiphyseal line. Now, there's one down here as well, and it separates the ends of the long bones and so forth. Uh, now, going through the middle of the bone, there's also an artery that could come in here. So there's this artery could come in and then it can feed and go up through and go down through as well. And veins could go through uh, here too, but I'm not gonna draw those. So this is called a nutrient artery and can feed go, can go through. Uh, it goes, we'll talk about how the artery goes through the central canals and can also uh, perforate through the bone. So going both parallel and longitudinal in the compact bone and in the medullary cavities. Uh, but that's everything uh, I needed to label on this one. So just remember, there's a medullary cavity, there's a yellow marrow, there's a red marrow of the epiphysis, and maybe a little red marrow below the epiphyseal line. Um, then there's another line down here. So just make sure you know diaphysis, epiphysis, and you know the ends and how to describe a long bone in terms of proximal and distal as well, because that becomes important when we're talking about each bone in particular. I'll be talking about the proximal epiphysis or the distal epiphysis. And then furthermore, we're going to start learning which is the medial and lateral sides of these bones too. So we're going to be taking it one step further in the future. So that's the first image here. Uh, so now is the next one. So I'm just going to move ahead here, just going to slide forward the video. And we'll come back to this one. This is the same video I'm going to use when we go over the humerus and talk about the different parts on the humerus. But here is the next model I wanted to show. So first, I show the side angle here. Um, so eh, where do I want to draw on this one? Yeah, let's just show the side angle first. Right here. So a few important things. The first thing we have here is the, the layers. Uh, so there's an outer connective tissue. Uh, this is called the peri, which is a round. So this is just one little section of the bone. So if we had the long bone here, and here is the cavity in the middle, we're looking at a section right there, and then this is the cavity, and then this would be a section on the other side. So that's all we're looking at right here between these two regions. So we have a connective tissue on the outside and on the inside. The one on the outside is called the periosteum. And then the one on the inside around the spongy bone, it's hard to see here, but uh, it is there. It's called the endosteum. So two main layers here. Uh, now there are these little fibers that anchor it down in here. These are called Sharpie's fibers or uh, perforating fibers. But sometimes you hear them called Sharpie's fibers. Uh, then you have the artery coming into the compact bone. It's kind of perforating and going perpendicular here. So these are called perforating canals. Uh, these are also referred to as someone's name, uh, Volkmann's canals. Uh, why they have each of those names, I'm not 100% sure, but just know it for you know, perforating canals versus perforating fibers. If you write that on the practical, you're fine. Now we see all these little tree-like structures in here. So uh, there's a tree, there's one, there's one, there's one. I'm gonna change the angle here and erase this and move forward a little bit in the video where I'm showing right here is a good part where we can see it all. So first part in the, one of these structures is called an osteon. Uh, so this whole structure right here is an osteon. So this is made up of all these rings, these lamella. Uh, so individual rings on an osteon are called the lamella. Sometimes you see these referred to as concentric lamella. Um, and these have uh, collagen fibers running different directions. And that's what gives bone is twisting strength. Uh, and we'll also see that on these out here. So these fibers are running this way, these fibers are running that way. So think of these collagen fibers crisscrossing and makes it, this is one of the parts besides the hydroxyapatite that makes up the mineral part of the bone, the collagen fibers running the opposite directions of the osteoid make it much stronger as well. Uh, so just erase all these little lines now. Uh, next, we have this little canal that runs in the middle. 
Uh, that's called the central canal. Arteries, veins, and nerves run through there. And we see each one of these has a central canal. Each osteon has a central canal. Now we move away, we see some compact bone that has to go in between the osteons. That is called interstitial lamella. So it's just the lamella that's between the osteons and help hold it all together so there's not gaps in there. And then there are these lamella that run around the outside. These are called circumferential lamella. So those along with the um, osteon and different lamella running different directions are what provide the strength. And now if we go down in, we'll show this a little better. So the next model shows one particular osteon, but I just wanted to highlight it right here. I'll label it on the next model. So these little black dots here are the osteocytes and they're packed in these little lacunae. And then we can see these little canals running through here called the canal liculi, but I'll show those on the next model. And I believe that's everything I needed to label on this one. So those are the important parts of the bone model. All right, uh, moving on to the little osteon model now. So here it zooms in and you can see those little rings. So see the different rings going a different direction. So this model shows that pretty well. You can see the little osteocytes down there, but we'll go check those out on the next model. And there you can see the end osteum on the inside, which is a connective tissue layering on the inside. And then here is our little osteon model and yeah, find a non blurry part right there. Uh, so here is that central canal arteries, veins, uh, nerves running through there. Here are these little, these red lines here. These are called the canal liculi, meaning just pretty much really, really small channels. And these channels are important because inside these channels, we have the osteocytes. Osteocytes are maintaining the bone matrix. They're also communicating to where more bone needs to be deposited. So if there's more stresses on this region here, these osteocytes are um, communicating via these canal liculi between each other saying, let's deposit more bone in this region because we need some more strength here. Um, so here you can also see the individual lamella running around. You don't really see the individual rings right here is the interstitial lamella then between the osteons. Um, so, oh, the central canal is sometimes called the Haversian canal. So I'll write that again here. So central canal, you can sometimes um, write this as Haversian canal. So everything gets its little special name uh, in here. But I think I got everything. I need to, I guess we can label the pockets to uh, the lacuna uh, where the osteo osteocytes sit. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, I'm going to clear this now and just play it again through, but that's everything I have for going over the bone model. There you can see how these canal liculi communicate in, on a different angle there. So we, today we went over the structure of a long bone, the important parts of the long bone. So the epiphyses at the ends, the diaphysis in the middle, the epiphyseal line. So you can see that a little better there. And then we went over the compact bone model, talked about the collagen fibers, the major components, and what gives compact bone its strength and how the arteries, nutrients, and nervous system gets through the bone. So the bone has osseous tissue, connective tissue, arteries, veins, all sorts of tissues make up the bone, which is considered an organ. Um, so that's all I have for today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. The next video I'm going to make is going to be going over all the bone markings, and then we're going to be starting to get into the skeletal system and naming all the bones and all the parts on the bones. But hope you all have a great day, and I will see you all next time, and bye-bye.